Let's talk about measuring our shoulder bump back. So shoulder bump is going to be how much our die is pushing the shoulders back. This isn't neck sizing, this isn't full length sizing. We're not talking about that part of the dimension. We're strictly talking about the, the actual shoulders that go forward into the chamber. And we need to make sure that when we're reloading, we move these back a little bit. Uh, general acceptance is about half a thousandths to two thousandths on most calibers. There could be reasons you'd be a little bit less or a little bit more, but I'm just saying as a general rule, uh, half to two thousandths is probably where you're going to want your shoulder bump to be. If you push your shoulders too much, then you risk fatiguing the brass and getting case head separations. If you're not bumping your shoulders enough, then you're going to get hard bolt closures. You're going to have some other problems there. So you really want to make sure you're doing it correctly. So how do we measure our shoulder bump? Well, we can use either the Widen case gauge, we can use a Wilson case gauge and micrometer top, or we can use the Hornady uh, shoulder bump kit on a good set of calipers. So uh, let me just show you how each of these tools works. There's reasons that I like or don't like each one, and they're just gonna fit your needs differently. So uh, first off, let's start with the Widen. So the Widen is an all-in-one caliber kit. So this is not universal in any way. This one is specifically stamped 284 Winchester. It will only work with 284 Winchester. Uh, that being said, it is a very simple tool to use. Uh, you just ideally take your primer out. They do have an, a, a little dimple down in the bottom to help if you have a primer so that it doesn't get accounted for in the measurement, but uh, I would still prefer to take all my measurements without primers in them. So you're gonna put the brass in, you are going to slowly turn and you'll just feel it stop. I mean, it's very simple, it just, boom, stop. And what we are looking for is we're looking for where this number is. So in this case, it's right on the go line of zero, 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 okay? And then if we take a, a piece of brass that has been sized and our shoulder has been pushed back, uh, now this particular one is not gonna measure quite as much. Uh, however, uh, we are, uh, just slightly over and I'm not going to get into the reasons why um, this is over right now I'm just doing it so that you can see there's a variance but this particular one is one thousandths maybe one and a half thousandths longer at the shoulder than this and and this is why it's important to know whether you're short or long so uh, if this is too long I might have a problem chambering it so I want to know so this is about one and a half thousandths now you can see the widens very simple but it is a unitasker it is one caliber only if you load a lot of rifle calibers you have to have one of these for every caliber uh, enter the Wilson which I have reviewed before and it is a great tool as well it utilizes the Wilson case gauges which on their own um, are not horribly expensive and you can get uh, blanks so you can actually have a gunsmith machine whatever caliber you want and then you simply buy the micrometer head separate this can be used on any of these uh, this one works in a similar manner i'm going to put that in this would be for instance my fired brass and then i have a zero line here and a zero line here and i'm just going to turn until i feel it stop very similar to the last one and then I'm going to note where that line is. In this particular case, it is on the number 22. And it doesn't matter. I'm just, it's a reference point for 22. And then if I was to put in the other brass, it goes to 20. Okay. So just about a two thousandths variance, whereas this one was around one and a half thousand. So very, very close. Um, and some of that's just in how you're turning it. So, you know, one and a half to two thousandths right there is what we're looking at. And uh, the Wilson does come with a check gauge so that you can uh, zero this thing if you need to. Uh, and then the last way that a lot of people are familiar with is using the Hornady shoulder bump set. Uh, these are uh, kind of caliber range specific. It comes with a whole set. There's like five or six different ones that you get that cover a range. And what you're gonna do is put it on your calipers. You're gonna zero your calipers. And then I'm gonna take one piece of brass and I am going to turn this. It says 1801 right there. And then we're going to put in our second piece of brass. And you can say, see it says 18025. So this one is indicating a variance of, uh, again, one and a half thousandths. Uh, you know, with the calipers, you have to get a little adept at pushing on this. 
so that you're not influencing it. You can see I can push in and out half a thousandths variance here. Uh, you know, that being said, I can induce about half a thousandths by cranking on this too much, and I can certainly induce the same amount of error with this one and a half thousandths. It comes down to ease of use and repeatability. For me, the case gauges, uh, you know, whether it's the Wilson or this, for me, I personally just find that I get better repeatability using uh, one of the case gauge versions over the calipers, mainly because they really are um, caliber and in some cases, uh, chamber specific like this particular one, uh, I could easily have reamed out to my actual chamber, which would then make me feel even more confident in the shoulder bump. A little tougher to do. This one's covering a wide, a wide range. Uh, there are some other companies uh, like Short Action Customs that make a much better caliper set. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those right now. Uh, people that I know who use the Short Action Customs version that is a caliper mount, absolutely swear by it. It is definitely a little more expensive, uh, but they do really good um, shoulder angle specific inserts, uh, which people absolutely swear by. So uh, I'm trying to work on getting one of those and we'll do a review on that later. But I do get a lot of questions on how I measure shoulder bump and I just thought I would show you uh, the three different ways that I can measure it here in my shop. So hope that helps you out. Enjoy and we'll talk later.